When most people think of science and engineering, they imagine someone wearing a white coat and working in a lab. And while experiments are certainly a key part of the scientific and design process, most scientists and engineers today also spend a lot of time writing computer codes. If you think about how much time you save on your homework when you use a calculator to perform basic math operations, just imagine how much time you can save teaching a computer how to perform those calculations on its own. That's why it's important for you to learn how to code while you're learning physics. Hi, my name is Brian and I'm a physics professor at Jacksonville University. I have a PhD in computational condensed matter physics and I teach coding as part of my college physics classes. In this video series, I'm going to provide you with videos and activities that can help you learn coding in a physics context. You don't need any experience at all and you don't even have to install any complicated software. All you need is a computer or mobile device with an internet connection, so if you're watching this video, you qualify. Each of the videos in this series will be about 5 minutes long and feature one physics code written in a simple language called Python. First, we'll review the physics concepts that you need to be familiar with. Then we look over the code and demonstrate how to edit and use the code. Sometimes we'll take a look at how the code works behind the scenes, but this last part will always be optional. Each video's code is available at a link in the description, along with a series of follow-up activities that I encourage you to try out. The codes are hosted on a website called Trinket, where you can edit and run the code with no software installation required. By creating a free account on Trinket, you can save your own version of each code and share with your teacher and friends. If you look at the follow-up activities, try out the simple problems first. They are the simplest, after all. Most of these videos can be watched in any order. If the video you're watching depends on a previous video, there will be a note in the video description. How you watch these videos is up to you. Your teacher might require you to watch them as homework, or you might watch them on your own. Either way, I always recommend trying out the simple problems in the description, because the best way to learn coding is by doing. If you're watching on your own with 52 videos planned in this series, you could watch one video a week and become a pretty good coder in one year. If you have questions or feedback, you're welcome to reach out to me via email, in the comments below, or on Twitter. I hope you find these videos helpful.